blow your fucking brains out. <laughs> the building's solely murder mystery in the premiere of season 4, episode 4, Charles has a dream in which Saz mentions the word paradise, a word that would have significant implications later on. But what I want to highlight is that Charles is still having a hard time accepting her death. In the fourth season, the concept of grieving is prominent. For Saz's presentation to the podcast group, Charles crafts a second murder board, as if we require additional boards. After receiving a death threat over radio at the conclusion of episode 3, he boldly states that Saz is a ham radio hobbyist and puts the word paradise on the board. Stunt. As the murder investigation continues in episode 4, Oliver's bad habits provide the next clue. He can't stop looking at Loretta's Instagram, fixated on a male arm that appears in one of their images. He discovers that Saz followed Loretta and that she went to a bar called Concussions a hangout for stunt performers through his fictitious account, which he uses to stalk her. Going to the bar is the next logical step for the trio, but they still don't have the answers they need a recurring problem in only murders in the building. The stunt people are aggressive and the bartender refuses to engage with them. They despise actors and refer to them as faces, which is a running joke. Even stunt performers have their own reality show. In the fourth episode, we pay tribute to the stunt community. However, Ben Glenroy, an old acquaintance, suddenly appears. Actually, it's Glenn, Ben's stunt double, and not Ben himself. He expresses his frustration with the trio in a funny way, saying that he has lost everything due to Ben's death. Yes, listen up. It's similar to Toy Story, except that the toys are replaced with stunt performers. Glenn is offered a role in the OMITB movie by the podcast Rio, who are curious in the woman who walks into the bar's backroom. According to Glenn, the backroom was created so that stunt performers could see Dr. Maggie, a chiropractor who specializes in helping people recover from the painful effects of risky feats. Saz was in constant agony, so she spent all her time with the doctor. Charles has a private conversation with the doctor, during which he finds out that Saz had mentioned a troubled relationship in her life and was looking forward to retiring and starting a new job. At this point, Charles understands that Saz was referring to him. After his friend dies, Charles continues to feel guilty, and this guilt drives the plot. Seeing the protagonist get so down on himself over it is distressing. Discovering the Westies' true intentions in their apartment complex is the most hilarious aspect of episode 4 of season 4. Mabel discovers the Westies skulking around Dudenoff's flat upon her visit there, following her discovery that Howard had left it. In order to get reduced rent, they expose a file to Mabel that shows they are engaging in illegal subletting of the units. Professor Dudenoff has retired and is now residing in Portugal, they all rent from him for a pitiful $200 per month. It was Rudy's enraged ex-girlfriend who threatened the podcast trio on ham radio, because the Westies are offering Mabel the same bargain, she has a chance to live cheaply in New York City. The characters' recent struggles are resolved in the fourth episode. For Charles in particular, the nature and significance of Saz's paradise remain the chapter 4's greatest enigma. After Charles returns to the stunt bar after having an epiphany, the answer becomes clear. He volunteers to be Saz's body so that the customary funeral can go forward. As Saz's body double, Charles lies on the pool table as the stunt doubles perform eulogies before a phony bottle of alcohol is smashed over Charles's head. After mistakenly using a real bottle on Charles, Glenn manages to render him unconscious. Recalling their conversation about her plans to establish her stunt academy, Charles has a dream in which Saz is back. Following this, Oliver takes Charles, Mabel, and themselves to the site from his dream with Saz. It is marked as the future home of the Saz Pataki Impact Academy, on the outside of the property. A nearby dilapidated structure houses an individual. Upon their arrival, they are met with the presence of Bev Mellon, a representative from Paramount Studios, who promptly raises a revolver to intimidate them. It appears that Selena Gomez's Mabel has gotten the short end of the stick this season. Despite the fact that a mysterious voice warned her to leave the Dudenoff apartment or face certain death, Mabel is primarily dealing with homelessness and squatting, while Oliver and Charles both have substantial storylines going on. Along the course of the case, I'm hoping we learn more about Mabel's inner life.
There is still no lead and no suspects in the case of Saz's murder. There is a little cliffhanger at the end of the episode. As we approach the midpoint of the season, we are eager to discover what happens in next week's episode.